Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this fine day? <clears throat> Hope your coffee is as good as mine. Oh, mine has got me through one heck of a morning. It has been a good day. I have got a great show for you today, folks. It's, you're really going to love this. Let's just dive right into it. Let's get started. my people let's do this hit the thumbs up button let's get as many people flooded in here as possible uh we're gonna start out i i always tell you people i always tell you people you are the smart ones you are better i am and again i always tell you i'm not kissing your ass i'm gonna prove it today i'm gonna prove it we're gonna get the dummies out of here right away we're gonna get we're gonna lose a lot of trolls right away we're gonna start with an intellectual exercise but i want you to stick with me because it ties all three of our stories together that we're going to talk about today there are important things happening each of them are different but they all tie together to this what we're going to start with so let's do this let's run through it really quick to start with uh, and forgive there are going to be a lot of images today so just again stick with me this my friends is at&t stadium at&t stadium holds 80,000 people. I've I've gone to games in the stadium. Every time the Texans play the Cowboys, I, me and this, Mrs. Texas Paul like to head down to, head over, down to, over to Dallas uh, and catch a game here. Let me tell you, this thing is massive. It is massive. And it's this, this is a fish island, so it's a little deceptive. As you get higher up, these seats get very steep. You know, they can only move you so far away from the game. So to get 80,000 people in, they had to make kind of a bowl. And man, I have to tell you, these nosebleed seats that I normally sit in, whew, that is a scary walk, man. That is a scary walk. But that is the inside of AT&T Stadium. This is the outside of AT&T Stadium. Now stick with me. We're going someplace with this. All right, this is where the intellectual exercise begins. This is AT&T Stadium. You can see it. Now, your stadium may not hold quite as many. AT&T Stadium is actually the largest capacity stadium, uh, NFL stadium in the country. Um, the MetLife Stadium will hold 2,000 more people in seating, but it's irrelevant. There are places to get inside this stadium. That, you know. Anyways, the number we're looking for is 80,000. That's why we're using AT&T Stadium as an example. Now, I want you to do this with me. We're going to envision people. Because when we talk about a lot of these concepts, a lot of them are so big they, we, that we really can't grasp them. They don't have the impact they should. And a couple of these stories are really important uh, today. So I really want to frame this this way. First of all, imagine, you, you know, you're looking at AT&T Stadium. We are going to take and we're going to make a clock. We're going to duplicate AT&T Stadium. This one that you're staring at is, is 12 o'clock. Then there's one identical at 1 o'clock, another one at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, all the way around back to 11 o'clock and then 12 o'clock to this one you're looking at. There's 80,000 people in each stadium. Okay? When you have all 12 of them, you have just under 1 million people. And I want you to, to visualize that. 
the people coming out of this stadium. You've got the circular ring of stadiums. You can envision what that would look like. They come out, you know, say you're on a tower in the middle, very middle of this clock that we just envision, looking out. And you can see, you can imagine from each of these stadiums, the people coming out, they would flow around the stadiums. You wouldn't be able to get them all in the middle. But you can wrap your head around that number. That's a million people, folks. Now let's take it to the next step. You have these massive group of groups of buildings to, to get a million people together. Now I want you to look out to the horizon, and we're going to duplicate that a hundred times. 12 here, 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 all the way around. It, it would run out over the horizon. But that's what you would have to do to get a hundred, to 100 million people. And that's where it starts to get a little fuzzy. You can play the imagination game, and you can imagine you're standing on your tower, you know, at this angle looking, and you can see just these clusters of buildings all around you. As far, you know, they would spread out over the horizon. And really, that's about as far as we can get as far as imagining people. But we've got to take it to the next level. You've got that cluster of 100 of these, 100 million people. To go to the next level, a billion people. You got to do that 10 times over. I mean, th the state wouldn't really hold all of those. It would be so massive. And that's where we start to lose the scale. It is really hard to imagine a billion people. You really can't. I mean, you can kind of grasp at the edges of 100 million. You could imagine all those clusters of stadiums. But a billion, you know, it goes out over the horizon. You couldn't see them. You just, it, you can't picture it. But to get to where we're going, we've got to go even farther. you got to take that cluster four times over to four billion people. And you get there, you get there to 4 billion people. And you take those people and all they own, their vehicles, their homes, their savings, their retirements, everything. Everything that is their net worth. And you add it all up. You come to less wealth than these eight men own. These eight billionaires own more wealth than everybody you just tried to imagine and couldn't. So let's talk about these guys for just a second. Guy in the upper left, that, that's Bernard Arnault. Bernard uh, is, is, he is into luxury goods. He's, he made his money the old-fashioned way. Uh, he was a, a vendor. He, he bought high-end brands. He's Tiffany's. He's Christian Dior. He's Bulgari. He is Tag Heuer. He is Dom Perignon, Louis Vuitton. Uh, Hennessy, um, Givenchy, Sephora. Ladies, you like Sephora? That's Arnaud. That's Arnaud. Then you've got Elon Musk there. He must start out at PayPal. He and Peter Thiel. Peter Thiel is, in, is probably going to do Um He is, this is Peter Thiel and Elon Musk together. Back in the PayPal days, you'll see why Elon Musk hates this picture. This is pre-hair implants. 
<laughs> this is Peter Thiel and Elon Musk. Of course, the guy on the left is Peter Thiel. He is was has been a Republican mega donor, which was really head scratching because Peter Thiel really is brilliant. He he really is brilliant. He was the brains behind PayPal. Um, Elon Musk has always been a carnival barker, in my opinion. Um, but Peter Thiel was really the brains behind PayPal. They sold that to uh, eBay, and that's where Elon Musk got his first $175 million uh, out of that deal, in which case he went on to uh, find a couple of engineers, a couple of guys by the name of Martin Eberhardt and Mark Tarpening, that had just founded a little car company called Tesla. They incorporated Tesla. He and a couple of other carnival barkers got together and, and took their ideas and ran with it. And the rest is history. Um, but that's where Elon Musk gets his money. Let's pull that, la that list back up one second. And thanks for sticking with me for this. This is important to get important context for the rest of these stories. Then you've got Jeff Bezos. You know how he started mail order businesses in the garage that's grown into Amazon. Mark Zuckerberg, uh, Facebook, and and now Meta. Larry Ellison. Probably most people probably don't know much about Larry Ellison. He is. Uh, another Elon Musk, he's a guy that likes to play politics, but he does it more quietly behind the scenes. He's actually on, Larry Ellison actually sits on Elon Musk's board of Tesla. Uh, but Elon Musk started, or Larry Ellison started out, he wanted to uh, do business with IBM. You remember way back in the day when you had the big tape-to-tape -tape real machines that, that – that IBM made that, that, you know, the original mainframe storage, all of that. Well, back in that era, Larry Ellison came up with an idea on how to create what is now modern databases. He standardized his big trick that made him a ton of money with Oracle was he standardized databases. He wanted to work with IBM, and IBM, in one of their many galactic mistakes, said, no, Larry Ellison, we know better. So Larry Ellison came up with basically standardized databases that we still use today, um, you know, to, to businesses. He focuses on dealing, servicing businesses. All of the data, all of your data, all of that is, is, is work able to do that and capable to do that uh, because of Larry Ellison and his idea. Then, of course, you've got Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, again, made his money the old-fashioned way. He just invested in good companies. He's a long-term investor. Really doesn't play politics that much. You've got Bill Gates, uh, Windows, and the rest is history. Everybody, Steve Ballmer, same story as Bill Gates, also from Microsoft. Uh, they came up with Windows and uh, every computer that's ever been sold since then, basically, uh, they have pocketed some cash off of. But again, neither of those two real big into politics. But these eight men control more wealth than half the world. There are eight billion people in the world. They own more wealth than 4 billion of them. And that's how I want to frame these stories that we're going to talk about. Just I want to put a pin in that. We're going to come back to it at the end. Asbro Newton says, these greedy men own more wealth than half the poorest uh, population of the world combined. It's not just the poorest. It, it's us. If you're watching this show, we're in that 4 million. We are. We like to think that we're rich. We're not. We're in that four million, believe it or not. Uh, it's not just, you know, when people tell this story, you get this picture that we're just talking about, like uh, people out in the Sahara Desert in Africa. We're not. It's you and me. It's you and we're not in the top half. Because these eight billion own more than half the world. There are another 2,773 billionaires out there that aren't as quite as rich as these guys. So, yeah, I mean, it, it really skews what you think half the world's population is. 
So let's talk about the stories of the day. And then at the end, I'm going to tie them all together. First of all, we've got Donald Trump. Donald Trump, I keep telling you over and over again, he is pudding brained. Pudding brained. He had a little get together uh, celebrating the release of his, you know, the, the, the sealing of the deal of Donald uh, Trump media, DJT. So he brought everybody together at Mar-a-Lago to celebrate that and gave a speech. And that speech is now going public. And the stuff he said is just, well, anyways, I'll just, just, just watch. And before I became uh, well known as somebody that was indicted more than Alphonse Capone, the legendary Alphonse Capone, you know, Al Capone, if he took somebody to dinner and he didn't like them, he'd kill them. If somebody looked at him the wrong way, he would kill them. He once had a date, very lovely young lady, and the man next to him tried to pick her up. Guess what happened to him? It wasn't good. Scarface, they call him. <laughs> It was not good to go after Alphonse Capone's girlfriend. I'll teach that to these guys. Just, uh, you don't want to do that, but it was not a good situation. He got indicted less than I did, Alphonse. I got indicted four times. He only got indicted two times. Now, the good news is our poll numbers went through the roof. The bad news is I have to deal with these maniacs. They're maniacs. And before I became uh, well. Yeah. That was the good part. <laughs> he has become so doddering and so delusional. He tells these stories about wanting to be like Alphonse Capone, wanting to be able to murder people, wanting to be able to, it's, it's, it's repulsive. Thank you, Katie Carroll. I appreciate the support. I really do. It's just repulsive. And you just hear the people like you, you could hear that woman in the back. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, it's it, it's not funny. It's not funny. But again, put that in the context of what the evening was supposed to be. This was supposed to be the big dinner party for the launch of DJT, his media company. It's supposed to be about business. And he's talking about that nonsense. I mean, when, when you actually put it in context, it's just even more insane. I mean, think about the target audience here and, and what he's telling them. I've been indicted more than Al Capone. Yeah, that, that freaking hilarious, dude. You're also sitting on uh, our money that we put in your company. That's not funny. But it, it got much worse. It, it did. It got much worse. He's just not there anymore, folks. He really has just come to pieces. They put him into the state of New York and then ultimately into the DA's office to run the case. This is being run by Biden. Uh, they put a man in to the state, Letitia Jones, peekaboo, I call her, peekaboo Jones, <laughs> peekaboo. They put a man into that one to uh, Leticia. They put a man into that one to run it, and then he went into the DA's office. They put him into the state of New York and then ultimately into the DA's office to run the case. This is being run by Biden. Uh, they put a man in to the state, Leticia Jones, peekaboo, I call her, peekaboo Jones, peekaboo. They put a man into that one okay. to uh, Leticia. Let me just stop they that for a, a second. Let's talk about what he's doing. First then, of all, he said they put a man in. They put a man. Leticia James is not a man to start with. I don't care what your nickname is for. It's just idiocy. But the fact that he has been indicted, lost horribly. His company is dead devastated by the case he just lost. And he cannot remember this woman's name. That she is a woman to begin with. 
order her name. I, I want you to just kind of put that in context, folks. Just the context of reality. We look at these clips so often, and, and it's like, wow, that's just that's just bad. But when you put it in the context of reality, that he just had a 450, what is it, 400, hell, it's almost a 600 billion now with interest, 600 million, pardon me, in interest, it's going to financially devastate his his company. He is going to go insolvent. When they start, the first thing they're going to do, everybody, everybody keeps having this conversation about what should Letitia James seize first? They're going to take his liquid assets first. They're going to take his Schwab investment account first. That's speculated to be around, worth around $100 million. He's going to go completely insolvent. He will not be liquid after that. And he can't remember the woman's name or that she is a woman. And he's trying to desperately come up with some conspiracy theory about how Biden did this to him. It's it's pathetic. It is really sad and pathetic. Let's just listen to it one more time. They put him into the state of New York and then ultimately into the DA's office to run the case. This is being run by Biden. Uh, they put a man in to the state, Letitia Jones, peekaboo, I call her, peekaboo <laughs> Jones, peekaboo. They put a man into that one to uh, Letitia. They put a man into that one to run it, and then he went into the DA's office. They put him into... So yeah, that that's our first story. If you actually listen to psychologists... If, you, if you're on social media and you listen to psychologists, they're all saying the same thing. He is running downhill fast, very fast. He can't do an interview anymore. His news interviews are disasters. Even when they're just hand-picked, 100% fanboy interviews, he can't get through them. He is not going to make it to the election, folks. He just isn't. I, I, it is, I am telling you, he does not have another six months in him. That's where Nugent says, peekaboo, they put a man on the moon, <laughs> or was it a woman? It was bigly, and our country is going to hell. Biden is after me. Is this unfair? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's just these horrible rants. And the scary part is, this man is the standard bearer for one of our only two, we are a two-party system, two political parties. And what's worse is, going into our second story, is that party has sworn complete and utter fealty to him. And they, they are doing things like hobbling our country, our ability to, to defend itself. They've gone after the FISA courts, folks. And the reason they're going to look at this list, look at this list. This is, this is uh, again, Jay of Kiev does a great job of putting these, these images together. If you're not following him on, on X, it, I highly recommend him. But this is his post, Jay and Kiev. You got Matt Gates, get a warrant, FISA. Jim Jordan, get a warrant, FISA. All the same thing, all the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. What they did is they killed the FISA funding in the Rules Committee. They have literally killed the FISA courts. And for, for folks, let me, let me just explain. You know, Intelligence gathering is not your business. Why would you know everything about FISA? You would, you know, why would you? Mike Cruiser, happy birthday, man. Glad to see it. Happy, everybody wish Mike a happy birthday. Look, FISA, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, it was back in 1978 they came up with this. 
folks, they try to pretend like this is new, you know, that 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 this is something that oh, it's just happening, um, and therefore we could just get no, no, it's been around since 1970. Eight, Benelico says, is it time to eat the rich yet? Some of them. And that is the point of where we're going. I love you people. You're always freaking ahead of me, man. I love you people. Ah, you, you give me hope. Not all of them. Some of them. We're going to that. But FISA, yeah, signed in law in 1978. FISA stands for Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. Before that, you would be appalled. You would be appalled at what was happening in our intelligence community. There was a hermetic wall between the CIA and the FBI. Foreign intelligence and what could be done here in the United States. Thanks for the support, Kathy. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. And they didn't communicate. You remember You remember after 9-11, we came up with the Department of Homeland Security? Because we were just appalled at all of these law enforcement agencies that weren't talking to each other. They all had different information, but nobody was sharing it. They weren't working together. So we came up with this massive overarching bureaucracy and Department of Homeland Security that could force these, these organizations to work together. That's kind of what FISA was, folks. They, there was a reason. They didn't just do this because it was Tuesday and they were bored. They did it because there was a problem. See, CIA cannot operate within the United States. None of our foreign intelligence gathering organizations, apparatuses, can operate within the borders of the United States. Thank you, Katie Carroll. I appreciate you, man. You are always here with so much support. I just, it it's, leaves me, my, my mouth agape sometimes, the amount of support you have. I, I really appreciate you. I really do. But you would be horrified if you saw how much information. Radio Chaos says Trump, the, the tan and the can president. Yeah, it's getting worse, too. It's getting worse. It is getting worse. Uh, he's gone from orange to, to poop brown. On his, He's doing bronzer now instead of his old orange stuff. It's disgusting. But yeah, I cannot stress to you enough that the CIA, the, the amount of information that was not being used, the number of threats, everything. And they said during the Carter miss Carter was a badass. Katie Carroll, I appreciate you. I really do. I really do. And I'm, thank you. But Carter was a badass that just does not get credit. So many of the weapons uh, systems that, that Reagan took credit for were either invented or brought to fruition through the Carter administration. FISA came to be during the Carter administration, but they did it, of course, very quietly. So he got like no credit for it. What that allowed people to do, it allowed us to spy on people overseas and still use that information at home. See, there's this concept called fruit of the poison tree. In, in legal jargon. And what it means is if something that isn't legally attained, prosecutors can't use it. And anything that comes from that information, prosecutors can't use. And the real beef is over Section 702 of the FISA Act. That's what has all of these people. And you'll notice these are the real Russia supporters. This is the Russia caucus. There's a reason they're trying to kill this. It's not just that Donald Trump, who is, you know, wholly owned by the Russians, told them to kill it. It's these people themselves have real Russia problems. Jim Jordan, he has been working with witnesses that were provided by Russian intelligence. We have their, you know, one of their witnesses sitting in jail right now who immediately confessed that everything he was told to tell Jimmy Jordan here came from Russian intelligence. Turns out Jimmy Jordan knew that. I mean, there's just all of these guys are all the Russia, you know, Andy Ogles. These, this is the Russia caucus. And what they're freaking out about is Section 702. 
that's the one where they lie to people and they go tell people all the time, you want them to be able to spy on you without a warrant? Not how that works at all. Section 702. I can explain this to you like that. It's really simple. There's three categories in Section 702. Section 702 deals with American citizens caught up in foreign wiretaps. Now, what FISA allows us to do is say, Vladimir Putin, terrorist that hates our country. It allows our foreign intelligence organizations to spy on Vladimir Putin on good legal grounds. So if they hear something, they can pass that information to the FBI, and it is not fruit of the poison tree. It is legally attained information. Now, if, if you catch an American in that conversation, Putin's talking to, say, I don't know, uh, uh, an American congressman. Section 702 has three situations that cover all of the situations in which that can happen. The first of which is a willing participant. That is, let's say a congressman is conspiring with, you know, like Russia, Ron Johnson, a senator or somebody. Let's say they catch him. Let's just do a hypothetical. They catch him plotting with the Russians to damage our country. What that would trigger is they would go to a FISA court. as the acronym FISC. FISC, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, and they would get a warrant. But they could take that initial information they heard under the old rules, they'd have to just throw that away. And they'd have to go stand before this court and say, uh, we really think this person's a bad guy and we'd really like to listen to him, but we can't tell you why. Well, now they can tell them why. That's what FISA did. But they still have to go get a warrant. You remember them saying, you know, that stupid comments, get a warrant, get a warrant, get a warrant. That's what Fisk is. It's part of the FISA law. It is a court, and it's not a special court. The only difference between a FISA court and a regular criminal, criminal court is they are sworn to secrecy. It is actually the same judges that rotate into these FISA courts. They don't bring up a whole special group of prosecutors and people just for this court. The only difference is this is dealing with national security, so they're all sworn to secrecy. IDG, they want to conspire with the Russians without getting caught exactly where I'm going. I love you people. Always ahead of me. That's where this is going. So let's continue on with our example. This person is nefariously involved with what's going on with this foreign bad actor. They don't have to throw that information away. They can use it as an excuse to get a warrant. And if a defendant wants to fight that warrant, there is a law. It's called Fisker. You heard of FISC, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court. There's FISCER, which is the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court of Review, which is an appeals court, just like any other appeals court. Only difference, they're sworn to secrecy. And these people are trying to kill FISA because they're saying that if you hear somebody on a wiretap doing a bad thing, that you should have to go back to the pre-1978 way of doing things where you can't tell anybody. You can hide that. Christopher Gar Garcia says, thank you, Texas Paul. I always learn so much listening to your show and valuable. Hey, man, that's what I try to do. It's just give everybody the real picture of what's going on. Jeanette Dowell says, do USA gets thanks here from Denmark? Oh, man, all right. I love the Danish. I love, so glad you're here. I am so glad you're here. But anyways, the second example, I told you there were three. The second example is, say you're a contractor and you're unwittingly participating with a terrorist. Say you make aluminum tubes. And the terrorists, the intelligence agencies have determined that they're using those aluminum tubes to make bombs, IEDs out of. You're not willingly participating in making bombs. 
you're a useful idiot to them. That's the second level, in which case they have to get a warrant. But you don't get prosecuted because you didn't really do anything wrong. But they can use that warrant to interfere with your ability to ship to the terrorists. And it's all legal because of FISA. Sierra Maid said, uh, Sierra Maid said, one says, the House Rules Committee on Thursday night voted eight to four to advance the FISA bill, teeing it up to the full floor vote on Friday per ABC News released today. Sierra, I appreciate you. You're way ahead of the story. Stick with me. We're getting there. So the Republicans killed this in rules. The third, the third, I want to, I'm going to tell you everything, you know, 702s, what, what's involved. The third one is a, a, a victim. It allows, and believe, understand this, prior to FISA, FISA they could not do this. They, they just couldn't. Prior to FISA, the CIA could not share with law enforcement what was happening. Let's say your business was going to be the victim of a cyber attack from Russia because they want to, you're bidding on the same contract against a Russian company. So they're going to cyber attack your business to prevent you from, from putting in a bid. Well, now the CIA or the NSA or, you know, military intelligence can take that information to the FBI and say, this is legit. It's not fruit of the poison tree. Act on it. And they can go to you as a person and say, hey, you're about to be attacked. We have to take steps. We can, they can share that national security information as much as they deem necessary to protect you. Before FISA, there was no mechanism to do that. FISA is not a bad thing, people. So this caucus, the Russia caucus, killed funding for FISA, which horrified our intelligence committee, which horrified the FBI. And Christopher Wray, and you know I am no fan of Christopher Wray, stood up and told these people, look, you need to understand what FISA does. This is not a joke. This isn't a CYA because you were sucking up to Russians and those conversations exist and you're afraid they're going to be made public one day. And they will be made public one day. It will be declassified down the road and you and I will get to hear how much these traitor bastards were actually participating with Russia. And that's what terrifies them. But Christopher Ray stood up and said, Hey, look, you know that attack they just had in Russia? Yeah, they're planning those here, too. And because of FISA and because of the way our system operates, we told Russia in advance before this happened. We told them weeks before it happened. And they just didn't listen to us. Christopher Ray told these Congress people, look, I don't care about your, your particular ass. I don't. I don't care. We have credible information that they're planning this type of attack here in the United States. Stop screwing with the system. The bill that was that was coming through, hey, do me a favor, I see y'all talking about a troll. Can y'all just go ahead and run through the chat and name the troll, make it easy for for a producer to find? Apparently they're missing him. Oh, he's gone? Okay, good. But yeah, that, that's what the Republicans were doing. Now they're backpedaling, they're backpedaling now because Chris Ray made these comments publicly and he did it to blackmail them. Because what they're terrified of more than these conversations eventually coming out is them being held responsible for what happens. And that's exactly the position that they're in right now. They've got a choice. 
This is this is going to be moved to a vote through a different procedure. If they block it, they own every attack in the future. And there are parts of the Republican Party that really don't want to be held responsible for that. But that's what it took. It took the director of the FBI to stand up and say, I have credible information of attacks in the future that we are preventing, and you're interfering with that. And if they happen, you own it. It took that for some of the Republicans to peel away and stop protecting Donald Trump and stop protecting their own traitor caucus that are working with Russian foreign intelligence to try to unseat an American president. And that is our second story of the day. And just to put a point on it, this is what was on their schedule. This is what Republicans are doing. This is what they have scheduled for Monday. While all of this that we just discussed is going on, this is what their Monday schedule contains. H.R. 6192, hands off our appliances act. Yeah, we're coming for their stoves again. Liberty and Laundry Act. These are real folks. Look them up. <laughs> These are real. Liberty and Laundry Act. Clothes Dryers Reliability Act. Refrigerator Freedom Act. Affordable Air Conditioning Act. I'm actually okay with that one. I, I, I live in Texas. I, I'm actually, I'm okay with H.R. 7626. Talk about that. H.R. Uh, 7700. Stop Unaffordable Dishwasher Standards Act. You know, the bad government putting standards on them dishwashers, making them expensive because, you know, they, they've got to be reliable. They've got to be uh, quiet. They've got to uh, not use excessive energy, things like, you know, good things the government does. Uh, they want to stop all that. That's That's not kidding what our congressional Republicans want to talk about. That's the shiny objects that they were going to take to social media about they're coming to get your stoves and make your dishwashers too expensive. That's literally what they were going to talk about until Christopher Ray went to the press and said, excuse me, excuse me. Now they're backpedaling and hopefully we can get FISA funded. And folks, that FISA funding bill actually had reforms in it to make it harder to make the Fisker reviews more stringent. Remember, Fisker is Foreign Intelligence Service uh, Surveillance Court, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court of Review, the Appeals Court. That funding bill actually had reforms that made those reviews more stringent. And it's not just the congressional Republicans. It's the party as a whole. Guess what they're doing right now in Tennessee? This Friday, right now, on the floor in Tennessee. Ooh, this is from Tennessee Holler. He's another one I want you to follow. Here, look, this is Tennessee Holler. The TN Holler, follow him on X, good source of for everything in Tennessee. They are right now, I've actually went through social, you can go to social media and actually see the debates, are trying to repeal the law. This is what's so important. They're trying to repeal the law that makes it illegal to marry your first cousin in Tennessee. The guy that's sponsoring the law, his parents are first cousins. Sponsoring the, the bill to, to roll back this law. 
His parents are first cousins. Oh, God, that just gave me a headache. I'm not kidding. This is this is Republicans. Th this is what Republicans do. Here in Texas, it, it's more fake border bullshit. It is. You know, Greg Abbott wasted tons and tons of money, you know, putting out the stupid razor wire. Well, guess what the drones caught? They're cutting the razor wire. And he actually thinks it's a flex. He actually thinks it's a flex to show, we're going to put them in jail. I got news for you. You cut my razor wire, we're going to put you in jail. This is a Republicans, folks. Th this is what they do. First cousins, man. You know they made that law for a reason, right? I mean, you are the smart ones in the house. I know I know you know that. I know you know that. If there are any trolls left in here, they made that law for a reason. Inbreeding is bad. But that's our second story. <laughs> Here's our third story, folks. Or actually, our, that was our second story. Uh, our third story. We'll say that's a third story. Wanting to marry cousins. Asborn Newton says, we need to keep the good seed in our trial. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I swear to God. All right, folks, for our most important story here that's going to tie us back to the billionaires, this is Luis, Luis Inacio Lula da Silva. He is the president of Brazil. He was elected back in October of 22. Thanks for the support, Barbara. He was elected back in uh, October of 22. He's pretty much what you'd call a Democrat. He's left of center, but he understands the business of Brazil is business. Uh, just like Democrats here, you know, I mean, we, we catch a lot of flack, flack from the far left of our party. Heidi G says, what other country allows traders to serve in their government? Uh, amen, sister. Amen. And and I I want, thank you for saying that. Hold that comment up there. Peter Campbell says, healthy trees need branches. Yeah. Ain't that the truth, brother? Ain't that the truth? Heidi G, what you're talking about, then this is why I'm telling you, you are the upper echelon, folks. You are. What Heidi G says is, what other countries allows traders to serve in their government is this next story. The difference between what we do and what Brazil is doing. Thanks, Heidi, for making that, making that sound. So, after, uh, and he goes by Lula, President Lula. After President Lula defeated his opponent, Jair uh, Bolsonaro. Thank you, Melody. I appreciate the support. Jimbo, thank you, buddy. I appreciate the support. I really do. After... President Lula defeats Jair Bolsonaro. He was the guy that, that was their Trump. Not very bright, controlled by uh, mega donors, uh, did the exact same thing as Trump, used the exact same language as Trump, created the exact same following. They have their own version of MAGA in Brazil. They were utilizing uh, misinformation fomented out of Russia. They have trolls there. After Bolsonaro left, uh, or not left, but lost, this is what happened. Trump aides Bannon and Miller advising the Bolsonaros on next steps because Bannon and Miller were advising Bolsonaro through the election and through everything he did through his presidency. That's why it's identical to MAGA. And that's the point I want to make in this story. I'm talking about Brazil, but it applies here. I want you to see they're doing it globally. Putin is funding this stuff globally. That was the next thing that happened, is Bannon and Miller swoop in to tell Bolsonaro what to do. So what do you think happened after that? Where do you think that went? Well, with the same direction it went here. 
they had their own January 6th. They attacked their capital. On January 8th, 2023, Bolsonaro's version of MAGA attacked the capital. But this is Brazil. This is not the United States. And they don't do things in Brazil like we do them here. In steps uh, forgive me. I'm trying to not sneeze so I'm very easy. <laughs> trying to not sneeze. In steps Alexandra de Mores. I'm gonna I'm killing that pronoun. Alexandra de Mores. He is a Supreme Court justice. He was tasked by President Lula to put an end to this. They're not going to have it. They're not playing any games. This is Alexander de Mores. And they looked at it big picture. The first thing they did is they arrested Jason Miller in Brazil got access to his information, who he was talking to. They arrested Jason Miller in Brazil. He was still down there working with Bolsonaro, fomenting all of this outrage and fake, false outrage, astroturf, causing people to rise up in their stolen election. They arrested him and they took all of his information off his, off his electronic devices and kicked him back to the U.S. They were in a hurry. They didn't hold him, didn't want to beef with the United States. At that point, they were moving quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean quickly because they immediately, immediately arrested these people. It's not like here where we spent the last three years finding these people. No, they arrested them on the spot. They arrested them on the spot, folks. And, and look at these people. I mean, tell me this is not MAGA. I mean, look at these people. Do they not look identical to MAGA? They didn't play around. And in response, the really tough guy, their version of Trump, what do you think he did next? He did exactly what I believe Trump is going to do when he's facing real jail time. He fled the country. And what third world crap hole did he go to? Florida. DeSantis openly protected him from his own government that was investigating this right-wing coup attempt. He ran to Florida. But the Biden administration didn't just sit around on his hand, and they forced him to go back home. They did. They put enough pressure on any, everybody in that situation that Bolsonaro went back home. And the investigations continued. They're not playing around. Alexander de Morias is not playing around. And they started arresting Bolsonaro's lieutenants. And so what did Bolsonaro do? The tough guy, their Trump? Um, he ran, oops, wrong, wrong tag. Uh, he ran to the Hungarian embassy. You saw if you remember a show a few weeks back, I shared this with you. He ran to the Hungarian embassy to hide. Viktor Orban let him hide in the Hungarian embassy. Well, our European allies, us, the Brazilian government, everybody put pressure Uh, Jamie B. asked, do you think Trump will flee if he's convicted? Yes. Yes, I think he'll flee before he's convicted. I've said that over and over again. People argue with me on that stuff. I haven't been wrong yet. He's going to run. This trial that starts Monday has jail time, baby. See, it's civil. This is criminal. 
He's going to run. I, I promise you. Before it's all over, he's going to run. But they did, they've been doing this investigation. They didn't play around. They busted these people because they lied about COVID. They found out that they falsified data that they fed the Brazilian people about COVID. I want you to contrast what they're doing with what we're doing here so that you can see just how corrupt the Republicans make our Department of Justice, our government, how hindered and hobbled it is compared to Brazil. They found, you know, in investigating Bolsonaro, they found out that his people lied about COVID. They just flat out lied. And they arrested his lieutenants. He and, and Bolsonaro ran again. He ran to the Hungarian embassy. They are convicting his people, have people in jail. Bolsonaro is next. They're trying to make this argument. Because the most damning thing that they have against Bolsonaro that that shows that this was a coup was that he tried to convince the military to join his coup. And they have been arguing vehemently that, oh, the military can do that. Yeah, the military can keep the peace. No, they cannot. No, they cannot. And the Brazilian high court told them that is bull. Our constitution is very clear in Brazil. The military cannot get involved in any way in anything political, period. That's it. Beneloco says a third party vote is a vote for Donnie. Don't kill America with a third party vote. Riding with Biden. Amen, sister. But the, the Supreme Court's ruled on this, and they, and they are serious. They are tearing through everything that caused this ha to happen, including the misinformation, the online social media misinformation. The government has been for forcing social media platforms like XChan to ban accounts like Elon Musk just put back on X when he bought it here in the United States. Russian misinformation accounts, accounts that lie. He's trying to say, well, it's freedom of speech. In Brazil, they say, uh, no, the hell it is not. It is lying to destroy our country. It's lying to try to input, install a Russian-owned puppet. That's not freedom of speech. And Elon Musk says, hold my beer. And he has picked the wrong fight. Elon Musk is platforming far-right activists in, in Brazil defying court order. The courts told him to ban social media accounts. Thanks, Katie Carroll. I appreciate you. I, I mean, I, I tell you, that, that's a lot of money. I really appreciate you. The Supreme Court told them, you have to ban these misinformation accounts. We're not going to allow our government to be attacked. This isn't just different ideas. This is direct misinformation that we can tie to an effort to overthrow the government. They also acted against traitors within their own government. They, too, have a Russia caucus in their legislature. The Brazilian government said, take their accounts away. They're spreading misinformation. We're not going to allow that. We will not have Russian fomented chaos destroying our democracy. Elon Musk said, oh, yes, you will. Oh, yes, you will. And he has squared off against uh, Alexander de, de Ma uh, Morias. In what is another one of the galactically stupid mistakes that Elon Musk makes, Adborn Newton says, freedom to lie malicious should not be protected. No, it should not. And that is one of the things we're discussing right here, right now. And let me tell you what's going on here, what they're doing here. 
to foment financial support and political support. This is Elon Musk's account on X. He calls Alexandre de Moraes a dictator. This guy right here on Mario Offel's account attended a live sponsored, you know, right on here on, on X Chan where he's spreading misinformation and lies. Elon Musk is allowing that to happen here. Again, X just received an inquiry from the U.S. House of Representatives regarding actions taken in Brazil that were in violation of Brazilian law. There were hundreds, if not thousands. This is getting spicy. These were not a violation of Brazilian law. These, these were actions taken at the behest of the Brazilian Supreme Court. And Musk is all in on this fight. We were asked to suspend, we were asked to suspend sitting members of the Brazilian parliament and many journalists. Yes, it's just like the ones we have here that work within the right wing to undercut our own government. Their government is defending itself. Our government is full of Republicans in the Department of Justice that will not defend our country because they put party over country. They, they put their own personal power. And they're, they're making horrible, horrible mistakes. Th this guy right here, this right, right here is Grover Norquist. He's the reason that we have Trump and the billionaire supporting Trump. He's one of the major reasons that we have. He, he heads a group called Americans for Tax Reform. You hear about that pledge that Republicans have to sign. Every, every Republican that runs for office has to sign his pledge not to raise taxes. That's the billionaires. That's the billionaires funding that. Grover Norquist said, we don't need a president with ideas. We need a president with just enough functioning digits, enough functioning fingers to sign the bills that we put in front of him and tell him to sign. That's what they thought they were getting with Trump. They, this is the great fallacy of this. They think they can control these Frankenstein monsters. These people have never read a history book. Putin, the first thing he did was throw these billionaires in jail until they bent the knee to what he wanted. Not what they wanted, what he wanted. And he dove deep into their pockets. That group I showed you, Vladimir Putin's not on that in that group because his his gains, his wealth is not from. Let me pull that back up for you again. I'm going to show you this a couple more times. His wealth is not from legitimate business. He takes a cut off of all of his billionaires. He is not on this list. This these are the richest men in the world. He is not on that list, but he is richer than most of these guys combined. They rape Russia. Their mining operations are horrific. The pollution is insane. The oil operations, everything. Putin gets a taste of all of it. And these morons that are funding this think they can control Trump. When Trump is telling them, he's telling I'm Al Capone, this crazy pudding brain freak I want to be Al Capone. He kills people. What the hell do you think he's going to do if he gets power again? He's telling us there's going to be no more elections. They're just flat out telling us. And these fools think they can control him. Fortunately, a lot of billionaires are waking up. you got Mark Cuban here. But it's like, oh, uh, no, this is too far, people. 
too far. Mark Cuban's come out and he's he's like, look, I you know, Democrats don't represent my interests. I'm a billionaire, but uh, you know, democracy is important. We've got to have our society. Adborn Newton says Trump has no control. It's all a whim. None can control him. He is a loose, stupid cannon on deck. Exactly. The Republicans have have have, have a monster they cannot control. But compare that to Brazil, what you've got going on in Brazil. Folks, there's a company called JBS in Brazil. They support Lula. And Lula is really wor- mirror to the Democrats. He is. He understands the business of Brazil is business. He gets that. You know, people are not complicated. You know, let's just stop for a second. People are not complicated. We are not. We need access to water. You don't have to give it to us. We'll get it ourselves. Just give us access. Access to water, access to food, access to shelter, and access to entertainment. And we will live our lives. You do not have to run our lives. You folks will get up. You will go to work. You will pay your bills. You do it all on your own. You do it all on your own your own. All government has to do is what you can't do for yourself. Right? That's everybody. That's the entire world. And a lot of the billionaires on that list get that. They understand. You know, like Warren Buffett. He's not an overtly political guy. He understands a stable society is good for him. He's a long-term investor. He doesn't like to rock the boat. Not all billionaires are bad. You know, going back to Heidi G's comment, is, you know, is it time to eat the rich? Not yet. Not all of them. Because they're not all bad. They really aren't. Dolores Montiero says, just to thank you for your border video. Hey, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. Telling people the truth. Most billionaires, to be honest with you, it's most billionaires. They focus on small things like Jeff Bezos. He's, a, he's not really a government guy. He isn't. He'll get involved in some things. Our Denmark people can tell you he had a, a yacht built in Rotterdam, and he built it too big to get it out of the dam harbor where he had it built. And there was a historic bridge. And he's like, well, tear the bridge down. And he got involved in government there trying to convince the local government to tear down the bridge. It was a historic bridge. Uh, They didn't. They didn't bend the knee to it. They didn't. They made him cut the masts. It was a sailing yacht, a massive sailing yacht. They made him cut the masts off of it, and they drug it out of the harbor. Jeanette Dahl says Elon Musk has started – uh, Farklet airing my acceptance on X, discussing just because I share Biden post exactly. Yeah, that's the new thing. What Jeanette's talking about there is that uh, they're screwing with the algorithm again, folks. You're going to have to follow me on other social media platforms than X, Threads here on YouTube. Uh, they're really they're screwing with X again, Mister Free Speech is going to try to shove that right-wing speech down your throat. But yeah, most billionaires don't. Like and, and JBS, they supported Bolsonaro. They've come around. Peter Thiel, he's not donating this year. Mr. Mega Republican Donor, not donating at all this year. JBS, and let me give you an idea how big, this is one of the biggest companies you've never heard of. But if you eat meat, you're their customer. You get some of their commercial customers are McDonald's, Burger King, Subway, um, Outback Steakhouse, KFC, Pizza Hut, Wendy's. They all do business with JBS. They're the largest meat company in the world. They're not just processors. They're actually producers. These are, these are some of the brands that JBS owns. It's a Brazilian company started from a Brazilian, by a Brazilian family, and they grew it the old-fashioned way. 
And then they started buying other companies. These are these are just some of their brands, okay? Let me read this. Let me show you. I'll share it with you. I'll show it to you as I read it. And I'm going somewhere with this. JBS, they are Swift. Who hasn't eaten Swift? Aspen Ridge, Just Bear, Pilgrims, as in Pilgrims Pride, Great Southern, Primo, 1855 Swift. That's a Swift Primo brand. Five Star, Five Star Reserve, Aberdeen Black. If you have if you have utilized any of these brands, list it in the chat, if you would, if you, if you don't mind. As we come to them, listed in the chat. Acres Organic, Adaptable, Alamesa, Albert Van Zunen. These are all meat companies. AMH, Aussie Beef, Bally Free. I told you they're they're global. Uh, <clears throat> Beef New York Black, Beehive, Blue Ribbon Angus, Blue Ribbon Beef, Byron Bay, Berkshire, uh, Berkshire Pork. Canadian Diamond. Hey, our Canadian friends, they're up there too. Canadian Diamond, Cedar River Farms, Certified Angus Beef. That's a big one. You see that in Walmart all over the place. That You'll recognize this one. Uh, Chef's Exclusive, Clear River Farms, Country Pride, Country Post. That's another one you see. Creative Food Solutions, DAC. Okay, if you are Gen X or older, you recognize DAC. You know that ham-shaped tin that has the mystery meat ham in it? We've all eaten. <laughs> We've all eaten. It. But they make a bunch of other products. But that one just made me smile because it took me back to my childhood. Dak. Uh, Dale Head Foods. Dane Pack. Danola. And we're getting to the end, folks. Hang with me. Danola. Del Dia. Uh, Henry Denny. Elite Prime. Four Star Beef. Fry Boy. Frid Fridge Raiders. Carl T, Geo Adams, Gold Kissed, Golden Plump, Gourmet Burger, Grange, Grass Run Farms, Great Southern Pinnacle, Hans, Hereford, Iboss, Hungry Joe's, Juan Imperial, Kingsland Beef, Kitchen Range, La Herencia, Lawson's, Little Italy, Little Joe, Madison's, Mountain Creek, Moy Park, Moy Park, Moy Park, Mr. Brains, Northern Gold, Northern Meat Shop, O'Kane, Oak Crown, Oak House Foods, Pierce Chicken, Pilgrims of Mexico, Plum Rose, Pure Prime, Queenslander, Beef, Red Gum, Richmond, Right to Rome, Rivale, Ravina, Rollover, Royal, Savora, Susvita, Savoro, uh, Seven Point Australia, um, Shirt Ken Showcase, Spring Case, Swift Australia. We're almost done, folks. Hang with me. Hang with me. Black Angus, Tajima, Tatiara, Tinder Valley, uh, The Bachelor, The Green Butcher, The Honest Butcher, Think Pure, Thousand Guineas, uh, Three Island, Tarico's, WB Black, uh, Walls, Weedle, Wicked, Yardstick, and Zap. And that is not an all-inclusive list of brands owned by JBS because they also own they also bought all of Smithfield's beef operations. Smithfield wasn't listed there. <laughs> it's a big corporation, folks. It is a big corporation. And they are behind Lula. They are they are behind Lula. They have figured out, you know what, we can't do the crazy. We just can't. They used to support Bolsonaro. But that whole exercise was to tell you a lot of these billionaires are coming around. Meat processing here in the U.S., that's not global. 85% uh, of beef processing is JBS, Tyson, Cargill, and National Beef. 70% of pork processing is Smithfield, JBS, Tyson, and Hormel. 54% of chicken processing is Tyson, JBS, Purdue, and Sanderson Farm. Just to give you an idea of the size of the company we're talking about. <laughs> Copyright on me, no kidding, right? Actually, you would be surprised at some of the laws regarding uh, ownership of specific names and whatnot. But yeah. You know, just going back to this list a little bit. You have people. Peter Thiel was one of them. He was one of them. Uh, 
And remember, there are 2,773 billionaires that are not on this list, that are all in on trying to change our government. And, and what are they trying to do? What is Elon Musk here trying to do? Because, you know, Bernard Arnault, he's not really put that political. Jeff Bezos ain't that political. Mark Zuckerberg, yeah, when it's his interests, he gets political. Larry Ellison, very political. Warren Buffett, not really. Bill Gates, not really. Steve Ballmer, not really. Not really. What's with the billionaires that are all in on manipulating our system. What are they after? Because like I said, folks, you know it and I know it. We just take care of ourselves. As long as our basic needs, as long as we can meet them, we just take care of ourselves. We form societies amongst ourselves. And in those societies, we just basically take care of our interests. We don't really screw with billionaires that much. You know, it's not like back in the day when we were smart and we had a 90% tax bracket that prevented these people from garnering this kind of power. That was the point of, of the 70 and 90% tax bracket was to keep these people from becoming this powerful. They were smarter back then. This is why Elon Musk is making these mega tax brackets for the ultra wealthy come back. Because ask yourself, what is it they're fighting for? They've already won the game. What is it they want? You know, a lot of the billionaires on that list just want a good, stable society. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate the support, man. 50 bucks is a lot of money, my man. And this is where I want you to go with me on this. What do they want? What are they after? Well, what's different? What, 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 what changes? All people do the same thing. We're, we're simple creatures. Water, food, shelter, and entertainment. The difference that we have, say, between us and China is what is that level, how much of each of those are we getting? How much entertainment? How much food? How much water? How, how much? How much are we spending for it? Those are the differences within society. And what these, and I call it the great grift, these right-wing billionaires that are shoving their churches down your throat, that are screwing with, you know, saying it's under free speech, but what they're really doing is supporting coups to get what? Matthew Prebo, thank you for the support. He says, greed is a sin. It is. And that's what this is. Enough is not enough for these people. Their goal is to reduce your standard of living as far as they can, as far as they can reduce it until you start to kill them. Really. That's the goal. That's the goal. And, and they never quit. Look, Heidi G with a great comment. Can you imagine Pelosi flying to Hawaii to consult with Obama during Trump's presidency? They never quit, folks. They never quit. These right-wingers, Cherry Foster, thanks for the support. What they're doing, what they did in Brazil, Brazil is putting an end to it, and they're fighting it tooth and nail. Elon Musk has taken on the wrong man in Brazil, because Brazil is saying, no, no. Our society will deem what is, is acceptable in our society. You will not force on us this chaos. Here in the United States, not so much. All they have to do is use catchphrases like free speech, 
or when you want to talk about FISA, all they do is they tell people, oh, they're, they're spying on you. Do you know how hard it is to get caught up in a FISA warrant? What you have to be doing to get caught up in a you are never going to be spied on by by, by by under a FISA warrant. Never. Never. Unless you happen to be talking to ISIS overseas, you're never going to get caught up in a, in, in, a, in a FISA warrant. But the grift never stops. Mustn't Elon be deported by betraying U.S. citizens? Yes, yes, I'm telling you, folks. This is my message to you. We're too soft on these people. We are too soft. We were too soft on the January 6th. They call them, you know, you know, hostages. As though they did nothing wrong and we're picking on them. The people that tried to engage in a coup in our own country, they sell to their own movement inside the giant grift that they're the victims. It's insane. Somebody brings up Carter Page. They portrayed Carter Page as the victim of FISA. FISA outed that he was a Russian spy, actively working with the Russians. They, he was so active that the communications they got on Carter Page, the Russians were laughing at him. They made the joke that, I'm a spy. I'm a Russian spy, and I do not contact Moscow as much as this clown. We found that through FISA, folks, and they portrayed him. Trump still portrays him because it was part of, part and parcel to what the investigations into the Trump started as, as he's a victim. As Ron Newton says, why don't 99% of people in the USA fight back against these fleecing billionaires in the group? They don't know. The information that we just shared isn't put out by the corporate media because the same billionaires own the corporate media. They own the messaging. They pretend the Republican point of view, when it's just flat out treason, it's just an opposing point of view. That's all. I mean, that's all, right? I mean, it's just, just another point of view. They both side stuff. The New York Times just had a horrific headline that said, the abortion issue, we have two problematic messengers. They had Biden and Trump. What? What's problematic about I'm going to restore, restore Roe v. Wade? Nothing. But the New York Times, just, you know, Rupert Murdoch, there you go. Rupert Murdoch is creepy as hell. Yeah, he is. He owns the New York Times. And, he's, and you, you know, it's, they sit there and they say things like that. So that if somebody's not in politics, and this is the message, this is where we wrap it up. Someone that is not in politics politics. Believe me, the people out there are not you, folks. They're not you. They're not as bright as you. They're not as informed as you. They don't know these things. They hear stuff like from the New York Times that, oh man, there's two problematic problematic messages on abortion. Eh. Go figure. And some of them are going to say, well, I'll just vote for Trump then. They don't hear that one side wants to restore your rights as a human being, and the other side is saying that they're actively going to remove them forever. Not what the New York Times tells them. And that is the kind of thing, the, the, the crap storm that Elon Musk is fighting to maintain. He calls it free speech. It's not free speech. 
Elon Musk is not for free speech. There was a guy that used to just do it to piss him off, would track his plane where he was flying, kicked him off of X. Sued to hide the information because he didn't like that free speech. Thank you for the support, Teresa. I really appreciate you. He didn't like that. And there was another organization that was tracking hate speech, hate speech on X and misinformation on X. Elon Musk sued them for saying it. He lost because everything they said was true. He's not for free speech. He's not. He's not doing this down in Brazil. He's not, he's not about to get taken to the woodshed and get put in criminal jeopardy by Alexandra de, de Morias because he believes in free speech. He's some sort of crusader. No. He's doing it because of the great grift. It doesn't work if they can't misinform. misinform. There's a concept called filling the space. There's only so much you can hear, folks. There's only so much time in the day. And if they can pump that time full of misinformation, you will never get the whole story. And it's really that simple. It is to keep people confused. It's to keep people from knowing what's really going on. And that is, they've decided... Your life is too good, and they're going to take it away from you. They're going to take your Medicare, your Social Security. They're going to take your freedoms. They're going to treat you like cattle. They're going to make you reproduce to make babies to fill their church pews because they use the churches to control you. And again, be fair, it's not all of them. Most of them have come to the like the like the folks over at JBS in Brazil have come to realize, ah, we can't do that. That Frankenstein Frankenstein's monster here is crazy. He's gonna kill us. We just need society to be calm. That's what Mark Cuban did. But there's still a hell of a lot. Peter Thiel has seen the light. He's gone. He, you know, Peter Thiel hugely funded Trump in 2016. He hugely funded Republicans in 2018. He was a massive Republican mega donor and funded Trump in 2020. This time, and Peter Thiel said it publicly, Trump called me for $10 million and I told him, no, I'm not funding anybody because they see that they are seeing the chaos and what it's costing them. Your job is to make them pay for it. Make the bad actors pay for it. Make Elon Musk pay for this. Destroy the Republican Party. Destroy their protection. You know, the Russians will get their comeuppance if you elect Democrats. We'll change the government will pump the DOJ full of Democrats that will uphold the law. Yeah, mea culpa, they're trying to remove child labor laws because your life is just too damn good. And they don't like that. Thanks for the support, Jay Winnett. Says, yes, thanks, Texas Paul. You're welcome. This is what I do for a living, folks. And I told you it would be a, an intellectual exercise, but you people are, are it. And that's what I have for you today, folks. That's our show today. I know it went a bit long. Thank you for sticking it out. Thank you for being here. I'm asking you, please hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notifications button, because as the election goes on, there will be lives that are not on the scheduled Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday shows. Do that. Share this information. Put it on your social media. Get it out there. We need this information out there. I mean, it's important, don't you think? 
Love you, folks. This is Old Texas Paul out. Thank you for the support. Michael, appreciate you, man. Ten bucks is a lot of money. I know it, bud. Thank you for the support. This is Old Texas Paul out. Enjoy some Texas cities at night.